of the PPP loan and have it forgiven. Um, we do have a simple Google sheet um, through Excel to help people calculate that and um, so that you can go ahead and qualify for it because we do know um, many of us do not have maybe like a profit and loss or QuickBooks. So we do have created that Google Sheet so that it can help you. If, you, if anybody needs that, feel free to reach out to us just by shooting us an email at info at notaryppp.com. We will post that information in the chat as well. And I'm happy to go ahead and answer any questions that anybody may have. I got a quick question for you, Leslie. So do we know um, of the deadline, like it, when they're going to like cut this off right now? Yes, the hard deadline is May 31st, um, but from every lender um, in the industry, they don't think the funds are gonna last that long. They think they're gonna run out by the middle of May. Hmm. Do, do they foresee like maybe an extension or maybe like a, a new surge of this coming? Um, there are hopes that there is, but Congress hasn't really been talking about putting more funds into the PPP program. Mm -hmm. I've seen more talk in regards to stimulus instead of PPP. Now, can, can a business get the stimulus as well or no? Can a business get the stimulus? Well, stimulus is, um, that's for personal use. Okay. So the individual can get the stimulus check, yes. But um, for businesses, that's kind of like what the PPP is. It's almost like a stimulus for your business. Um, I would say if they run out of PPP funds, I would encourage people to see if they're eligible for the EIDL loan. Um, though it's not forgivable, that one, um, it's not forgivable, but the interest rate on it is low. Mm -hmm. So they may qualify for that. So there's a lot of funds floating around. You have stimulus, you have the PPP, and you have the idle loan as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody that wants to ask a question, please um, just raise your hand and then we will get to you. Um, we are streaming live. We're live right now with Leslie Dawson. She's talking about PPP secrets. This was a four week interactive course. Um, basically, they went from qualifying to finding the perfect lender, what's forgivable. And then today, we're just wrapping everything up. So this is part four of four. So if you guys have any questions, uh, raise your hand and we'll uh, get you online with Leslie. So like, what are, what are some of the concerns have you seen business owners have when it comes to this PPP, um, accessing the PPP or, you know, after they accessed it? Mm -hmm. um, prior to them being able to access it, the main concern they have is number one, are they eligible? And the way we help them determine that is if we have to, we hop on a Zoom call with them and we look at their tax returns because we've just found that um, a lot of small business owners have had challenges just understanding their tax returns mm. to see if they even qualify. Um, so that's the number one thing and just having all of their documents in order where they're easy to upload um, to, the, to our portal or send via email. As long as they have, can do those two things, it's a seamless process. Um, after they receive the funds, um, their main concern is understanding how to have them forgiven. And I would say to that, don't stress over the forgiveness part mm -hmm. per se, because any business that's receiving under $150,000, the government has set up a streamlined process so that it is um, very easy for you to be able to get them forgiven. The application is shorter than it is whenever you apply. The forgiveness application is five minutes um, at most and is sent directly from your lender and you just complete it and you're basically certifying that you did use the funds 
for um, what you said you would use them for. And then it's pr pretty much that simple. You just go through and answer the questions. It's like a one page sheet. Um, so it's not a very tedious process um, if you've received under $150,000. Only thing you really want to do is just keep a record of what you spent it on because it's just like your taxes they have where they can come back and audit you for a few years, mm -hmm. but that's it. Okay, so it's because I got so many questions about this thing. So, oh shoot them. <laughs> yeah, like because I'm I'm wondering like as long as if I use the funds, let's just say my business um didn't need as much funding as i thought but i qualified for it let's just say i'm gonna just throw a number out there you know forty thousand. but in in reality it i only needed fifteen thousand to get my business floating the way i needed to right mm -hmm. would i be able to use any of that excess funding to make some sound investments. Like I, I plan on paying back the loan with their interest rates, that's fine. But I'm just saying like, you know, the excess fund, the extra 35,000 that I have, hey, I wanna make some sound investments so my investments could start paying back this loan. Is there anything out of the ordinary with that? Have you seen? Okay, my answer to that is this. <laughs> um, I would use that 25,000 to pay yourself. Because when you pay yourself, what do you get the option to do? Mm, interesting. Okay. I see what you mean. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Pay yourself with it. See, that's why I hang around smart people in class. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mr. Toledo, you got an A again. Yep. Me and Leslie, <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> Me and Leslie definitely did, didn't we teach? Okay. Yep. <laughs> So, no, that is, I, I didn't know that. That is, that's fantastic to know. Um, yes. So getting your taxes done, getting, you know, get some good bookkeeping. You would recommend getting some good bookkeeping for that because if they do audit you, you're prepared, you're ready. You're not, you know, panicking and biting your nails. Um, what, what else would you recommend in that process? Like what, what should um, we have our ducks in a row in case they yeah. want to, you know, dive into the accounts and say, all right, let's see what, what you've been doing with the funding. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely just, like you said, bookkeeping, documentation, keep a record of everything. And then if it's, if you're someone where it's very hard for you to keep a record of it, mm -hmm. then um, you can set up when you receive the funds, set up a separate account then and put these funds there. That way, nothing, anything you use it for, that's the only thing that's coming out of that account. Ah, wow. Just set up a separate account and put the funds in that. So it's not um, getting mixed up or co-mingled with anything else that you might be doing for your business. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. awesome. Now you, you can use some of these funds to expand the company as well, right? Like, like for marketing and advertisement, you can use the funds towards that. Uh, yes. Uh, marketing and advertising advertisement would fall under operational costs Okay. or like, um, another thing that you can use it for is if you have suppliers, um, the funds can be used to pay your suppliers okay. as well. Mm -hmm. Because I had a I had a business owner ask me, they said, hey, look, you know, I'm a startup company. I never actually had the, I guess he would consider it like disposable income to put into maybe some Facebook ads or Google ads. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. that he got the PPP loan, he was like, man, I'm wondering, like, would I get in trouble if I put some of these funds towards those ads, because they never, I don't have a history of actually getting ads prior to the loan. Mm -hmm. No, mm -mm, he would not. As long as he keeps it under that 40% margin, he can use it for that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, see, whenever they first created this program last spring, you couldn't. There, mm -hmm. They had so many restrictions on it um, you couldn't use it for those type of things, but it didn't really make sense. 
because it's like all that does you have to advertise you have to market you do have expenses for your business and you should be able to use it for that so um that's why they changed it and broadened mm -hmm. which what it could be used for as my friend said never let a good crisis go to waste <laughs> ain't that ain't that right london <laughs> <laughs> Because we like he like he was we were uh, chopping it up one day and he was like, hey, we may never live through a time like this again, where funding is just being released at an alarming rate, right? Mm -hmm. So, heck, the ones that do the right that make the right moves and make the right sound investments for their businesses, man, I, I think there's going to be a lot. A lot of new millionaires in the next year or two. If they, oh, I, I think ab absolutely. Just with a combination of things, the mm -hmm. crisis, and then I'm a real estate at heart, so I can foresee what's about to happen when this is over. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, though. If you say anytime somebody says I can foresee, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to tap into that vision. No, no. <laughs> I, I need to see what you see, my dear. Come on, don't let me walk into the quicksand while you're walking on sound ground. As a real estate professional, what do you see? Please tell me, I got my pen, trust me, Leslie, I got my pen and paper ready. I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, Um. no, I'll keep it really quick and simple. Sure. There's a lot of people that's hurting due to this pandemic and the crisis. Mm -hmm. And right now we're putting like a Band-Aid on a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. um, so they have forbearance for people's mortgages, right? Um, so they're not having- I don't, I don't know what that is. What's forbearance? Okay. So forbearance means that they're not having to make their mortgage payment. So mm -hmm. just like um, people are getting rent relief, People who have mortgages have the option to say, okay, I can't make this payment right now. So their lender will add those payments onto the back of their loans, mm -hmm. right? But that's only loans that are federally insured. Okay. Okay. If they have a lender where the loan is not federally insured, then some of their payments that they're having for forbearance put on or they're able to put off for a while due to the crisis is some people are not going to be added on to the end of their loans, right? Okay. And that means when this is over and the forbearance period ends, their lender can come to them and say, let's just say they've put it off for the whole 12 months that this has been going on. At that point, they may owe $10,000 when the lender can say, okay, this is due in 30 days. For those people, if they didn't have it now, they might, they're not going to have it all at one time for that big right. long sum either, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to put them um, in foreclosure, okay? So as an investor, if you're already marketing to those people or you're there to help them in that situation so that they don't get foreclosed on, you can find a solution to help them, but you can also acquire that property. So that's where I say a lot of millionaires will be made because uh, they're gonna, okay. investors are already preparing for the people who are going to need help to get out of their homes. Now, this is something that I was out now. I'm not in the real estate market yet. I do plan to be, uh, you know, to really jump in and be a real estate investor really soon. Mm -hmm. where, where do you see, do you see a market crash? Do you foresee that? I do, uh, absolutely. But I don't think it'll be anywhere like it was in 08. Okay. Um, but I do think it's going to, um, we are going to see a sink um, for a little while. It just won't be as bad. And the reason it won't be as bad is because of the hedge funds. Like mm -hmm. when I tell you that there's going to be some foreclosures. Yeah. Well, us smaller investors, individuals, or mom and pop companies, we're going to get some of those, but hedge funds are buying them up by the hundreds from banks. Ah, 
in bulk. So whereas before, yeah, they're buying them in bulk. Whereas before they were all available on the market, you could get good deals. And stuff. Yeah, they're buying them in bulk by the hundreds. So um, it's going to be one. It just won't be like we've seen before. But I would say um, if you want to position yourself for it, be ready to partner with people who have the knowledge or skill set about it or have cash flow because that's going to who's going to win. You're going to have to have cash. Now, you're in uh, the North Carolina market. Yes. OK. And then so if people wanted to get in contact with you because you are a real estate professional as well and like, you know, mm -hmm. you just happen to know a lot about um, the PPP situation. Um, I, and it's funny that you're in the North Carolina market because I was just watching a video with Grant Cardone saying how they were looking at like 18 or 85 unit buildings out there. In North um, Carolina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how, how would people be able to get in contact with you as far as like maybe they, you know, on some real estate investing type of tip? Absolutely. Um, I'm available. I am on Instagram. I'm Leslie Dawson Real Estate on Instagram. So that's at Leslie Dawson Real Estate. Um, you can inbox me or book a consultation. Bree, can you put that in the chat section for me, please? You said um, Leslie Dawson Real Estate? Yes. So that's the Instagram handle, ladies and gentlemen. So if you guys wanted to get in contact with her and look into some investments, especially in the North Carolina. I heard that's a hot market right now too. Absolutely. So um, it doesn't seem like we have any questions right now. I think you pretty, you guys pretty much did a fantastic job covering damn near everything over the last four weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So I really appreciate, really we home. gotta have you back on the show. Um, I don't know what we'll talk about. It might not be about PPP, but we'll talk about something though, because you're a notary as well. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So we Absolutely. definitely need to chop it up on that. Did you have any last words, any final says? Um, no, I do want to thank you guys for your time. If you need to reach us, um, our website is notaryppp.com. Um, and again, you can email us at info at notaryppp.com. Awesome. Awesome. And thank you guys on Facebook for tuning in for the live stream as well. We will talk to you guys soon. You heard?